what it do j crew it's your girl jasmine i'm back with another video sorry it's been a few weeks since i posted but the last time i posted it was around midterms and i did like a midterm um update on how grad school was going in my first semester and if you recall it was a hot mess if you haven't watched it make sure you go there and check it out but anyways i have another video for you today and i will be covering grad school interviews things you should prepare for what to expect tips and questions to ask during these interviews so if this is something that you're interested in make sure you keep watching I get started I want to make sure I talk about um, so I want to obviously continue to grow this channel and post more and be more consistent that's one of my goals for 2021 um, to help grow my channel and be able to help more people going through the process and post more about my lifestyle uh, and just other random things that I've posted on my channel um, and I really appreciate all the support that's gotten so far and if you enjoy my channel make sure you give it a thumbs up on my videos and subscribe and share with all your friends all right y'all so my next set of disclaimers I guess so I am a first-year PhD student and I went through uh, my grad school process application process last year and I prepared for it for about two years so all the stuff that I share with you guys accumulation of things I learned personally of things that um, I've learned at conferences people have shared with me and sometimes I just ask academic Twitter and people respond to me or just conversations I see that I think may be relevant or things I wish I'd known so I'm not an expert I'm not like a grad school guru I can't promise you you're gonna get into grad school but I can promise to share information that will help along the way and maybe uh, help, help you prepare so that's that on to the actual content so boom you spent hours and days and weeks and months on your application on your personal statement re reference letters and all that stuff and you get an interview <laughs> that's a big deal and you should be really proud of yourself if you get this far and if you're preparing for it i know you could do it have faith and let's go so the first thing i want to cover is the type of interview so obviously we're kind of in a pandemic so the type of interviews are really limited to probably only phone or video interviews but if we were in normal circumstances there's different types of interviews so there's um <clears throat> i guess different ways that schools go about the interview process i should say so i've experienced a few types of these and um i've heard other people experience some of these so they vary from school to school so the first type of, of interview process that you could be going through is that the school will contact you and say hey we're interested in you so we're setting up a um, interview either via phone or um, zoom or whatever and then you'll have that interview and during that time they're kind of narrowing the pool so maybe they start with a pool of like 50 applicants and they invite like 30 for interview and then um, from the interview they may be like okay so we liked you we thought you did great on the interview so let's have you come to campus and then um, that could be the final stage of your interview so the first type is a phone interview zoom interview followed by an inter in-person interview and then the second type could be that they contact you and say hey you know we loved your application we thought you'd be a good fit so why don't you come to campus and have the interview there so then the other type the second type is you know you don't have the phone interview they just invite you to the campus for the interview there and then another type could be that they accept you and then invite you to campus for a visit and that one is probably like probably the best one because you get in and then when you get to campus you're not like super nervous and worried about like all this stuff and you're preparing for the interview and all this stuff you kind of just go and they're trying to wow you so I think that's probably obviously the ideal one um and I think there are obviously other types of interviews depends on the field you're in but these are the three main types that I'm aware of and I, I've heard of so obviously there's many different types of interviews you should be going through but the one thing you always have to make sure is that you're prepared regardless of the type of interview it, interview that you could be going through you should be prepared and um, be ready for the interview so there's several ways that I did I prepared for the interview that may be helpful um, so the first thing it might sound like duh you know this but you want to prepare um, like 
write down somewhere especially if it's a phone interview if it's in-person interview you make sure you go over this before you start the interview but you want to write down your goals um, your research interests your research ideas and how you could fit in to that program and that lab and that sounds kind of like oh well obviously i know what i'm interested in but you think that the first phone interview i got on it was super awkward because she was like oh like what are you interested in and you want to make sure what you talk about is what you talk about in your personal statement and um and all of your application materials because you don't want to get there and say like something completely different they're not expecting it so, and it's easy to forget, easy to be sidetracked, especially if you're on the phone and you have these awkward silences or you're just kind of stuttering or especially if who you're interviewing with um, isn't um, prepared for the awkward silences, it could get really weird really quick. So make sure you have somewhere like your goals, your interests um, and how you want to fit in this lab. So that's like the first thing, make sure you know about yourself, which obviously, you know, and then the second way to prepare is make sure you know about um, the advisor or whoever you're interviewing with um, research about their lab, their research, um, so that when you're having this conversation, you're able to be like, oh yeah, like ask more specifically about the project that you'd be interested in working on or talk to them more about their research or if they reference it, you're not kind of like, uh, ooh, mm, mm, you know, then it'd be really awkward. And you want to keep in mind that you are also interviewing the school and the advisor because this is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time and you obviously want to make sure this is a place that you feel like would fit your interests, a place where you feel like you could grow and a place where you feel like you could get a lot out of. Um, so definitely keep in mind that it's not just them interviewing you. You have to make sure that this is where you belong, where you want to go. Other random side note, thing, now I'm looking at my actual thing I use for my interviews. The things that I wrote was things I like about the program and obviously my interests. So like the things I like about the program, one of the things I wrote was like that it's applied, that it's action research and heavy intervention. So these are things that I talked about because a lot of times they will ask you questions about why you chose that grad school, what what do you like about the program um and like what your goals are and obviously you don't want to have nothing to say so that's why i for each school i wrote like things i like about the program and my interest and kind of like how they would fit together which i know is a lot to do to prepare for um an interview but if you've already done all of that to apply for it you obviously probably have a good idea of like why you applied for the program and what you liked about the program so also make sure you prepare that as you know just another random side note and the last thing I will say is make sure you test everything before your, your interview. Make sure your Zoom works, your phone is connected. Make sure you're on time. Make sure you're prepared for it ahead of time. Make sure you um, prepare for any unexpected technical difficulties or anything um, related. And make so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is questions for grad interviews. Like I, I don't know if you could see this like whole set of questions I asked. And this was something I accumulated for a long time people are like make sure you ask about this make sure you ask about this so the first thing that i asked um was about their grad students um how many grad students you currently have and what stages that they are currently in because it could be relevant because if they have like five fifth years that are like in dissertations may be different than having like first years or second years that are in different stages so you want to ask just to see where they are at and how much time they could give to you um average time for them to graduate which is a really important question i didn't even realize that because some programs it's like five years for the whole phd but some it, it could be an issue if one of the advisors students are all taking like six or seven years and you don't want to spend like too long in a program much longer than you have to so that's a good question to ask um, ask about healthcare if it's provided in the grad student packet um, and something that is random um, that I asked because I was interested in was the format for comps which is like the um, candidacy exam um, so some programs have like a three four day sit down exam where they have to study for months and, and memorize a bunch of stuff and they could be asked like 10 questions some programs have it where they do a set of small studies so it's different and I was just curious about what the format for the, that school would be because I, I think that would impact how I prepare or how I progress through grad school. Um, and for me, this is this is something that was big for me, which is in the interdisciplinary research. So I asked if they did that, if they work with other departments on campus, if they 
work with other faculty in the department um, and community connections if the um, because a lot of the programs that I, I applied for a lot of things that I was interested in was more community based work so I had to ask you know do you have those community connections um, if not like is this something that's possible for me to establish yada 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 um, and where are they in their own career which um, it's something that I guess people probably don't ask often, but it's important to know if if they're a tenure faculty, so they're going to be in a different position if it, than if they're a junior faculty trying to get tenure because tenure faculties have their own goals of getting tenure. So they have to publish this much, they have have sit on this much um, boards and do this much service and have this many students graduate and all of that. So um, just kind of see where they are at their own career and also to go along with that is like, um what their goals for you are in your lab so some faculty may want you to just work on their research on their big grants or big funding and all of your papers would come from that that's something that i didn't want some people who may find someone who have really like precise research interests are able to do that where they're able to just kind of piggyback off their um, advisor's research because it's relevant um but i was not able to do that um, another question that I asked um, was how do you see yourself supporting me which some of these questions I realize are probably like awkward to ask but this was something that was important for me because um, I know the type of mentoring style I would need uh, I do prefer like a more hands-on more interactive where I talk to my faculty advisor more and have their input and guidance and where some people are kind of like hands off, laid off, like I can meet with you like once every few weeks and we can be cool with that. That wasn't the type I needed. So I need to make sure um, I knew what their style, mentoring style was so I could see how I would fit. Dang y'all, I really just be talking for a long time. So let's take a two second stretch break. So the last things um, that I asked about, which is probably the most important is funding you need to know how you're getting paid how much you're getting paid what you're taking out um so i i was just like so can you tell me more about the funding packet um and i guess that could kind of go to, with the healthcare question I, these are literally the order i asked the questions in but yeah so i asked about funding fees were covered because some programs don't cover the fees so like you would get paid but then you still have to cover the fees which could be a few hundred to a few thousand a semester so you want to know that ahead of time um and with that i also asked about fellowships if there are internal fellowships um of course you could apply for like the external nsf nih ford fellowships but i asked about internal fellowships because you know it could be easier to get and more specific to your program and your research so yeah so i definitely asked about money because you know i need to know because your girl is broke so i need to know if i'm gonna be even more broke in grad school so yeah so those are the questions that i was prepared to ask in some form um but obviously ask questions that are more specific to your program more specific to your interests and your needs but this is just like a basic guideline of things that um, you should cover this is usually taking place like after the interview and they're like oh do you have any questions and yeah like I had all these questions so the interview went on like a lot longer than they expected um, and oh okay I just remember this one last question that I asked which was really interesting to hear was I asked like what was it about my application that um, made you interested in me as you know a grad student and I really liked the answers because I think it really made a lot of the faculty think and be like huh let me like you know reflect and that really showed me how much they put into my application how much they read and if they were genuine about um about like thinking that'd be a good fit and I asked this to like all the people I interviewed with and that really it was just really interesting and, to, and it was a good thing for me to know like what I was doing good and like maybe things I need to work on so yeah another thing you probably don't have to ask what I did because I'm extra so yeah so that is all I have for you guys today hopefully this was a short video I don't know I ramble a lot in like all of my videos but I hope you guys found it useful and let me know if this was something if you took anything away from this video um, if there's anything else you have questions about and any other things that you may suggest for my future videos and just thoughts comments and concerns in general make sure you leave them down below make sure you give my video a thumbs up and share with all your friends and make sure you subscribe if you're liking what you see and I will see you all next time on life with Jazz. Thank you.